In a world in crisis, can three idiots find hope in the darkest of places? Will love conquer all, or will hate win out in the end? This is a show called Hate. greater meaning and perhaps a little perspective i'm john i'm chris and we and are nick who are, who are you really that was spooky. <laughs> be honest who are you i'm liz and i'm lucy yes you see um it's very uh, where is it where is nick he's he's betrayed us i've only come here to see nick he's was, where is he john <laughs> God's sake, i don't come here for you uh no, no. no he has uh, he's betrayed us uh he's gone to <laughs> the other side of the world with his uh new wife Yay. Scumbag. Not that he... Oh no, yes, yeah, so congratulations. Not that, he, <laughs> not that he had an old one, but uh, yeah, so in... Uh... <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, but in his absence, uh, we're gained by Liz and uh, Lucy. Hello. Yes, hello. Woo. Hello, are you, are you feeling hateful? Always, sure. What do you feel are your qualifications to talk about love and hate here today? Well, I've listened to all three podcast so far my god that's, yes. i mean that's, and that... i've listened to one twice oh oh i can't i can't Heavens. do that i've only listened to each one once so, so. by you being here you've essentially halved our listening audience <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's a danger isn't it well i've got a glass of red wine so i feel like that's justification enough to yeah. uh vent but uh do you do you have like your you know you ready you ready i think to... so yeah. i think so we've 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 co-prepped a bit so we can back each other up okay because nick is a pretty like spiteful man yes yeah. indeed do you yes, feel I you can so. bring the fire i think we can bring a new perspective on <laughs> hatred a new kind of hate <laughs> we're gonna rebrand hate for the uh, 21st century um so yeah if you are listening at home hopefully you caught up on the previous episodes uh the gimmick the, the, the entire Otherwise, sh- no one's going to know who Nick is. I know. They've not listened before. I think, who's this Nick? Yeah. yeah. No one's talking about him. Uh, yeah, so the gimmick, uh, the shtick, is that each week we bring a topic of love and a topic of hate to the table for discussion, and we can all decide as a group whether it's truly worthy of its respective emotion. And we also take your hate and love from you know at home from yes. the listeners to yes. uh so we can pass our ill-informed judgment on it yeah we are the authority on because, hate because the, these days in, in in the local area oh entirely yeah. yes yeah i said so, so maybe yeah. not we're not saying global we're not kind of not yeah. yet not yeah. global yet <laughs> the lo- yes, local yeah. area being like this living room yeah yeah we yeah. basically we <laughs> oh you're, you're gonna listen to us <laughs> <laughs> so um you can join in at home using the hashtags show called love and show called hate hopefully you can work out which one is which to send us your loves and hates for discussion frankly frankly if you don't know the difference between love and hate just Get switch out. off now i don't yeah, want i don't want you listening <laughs> i don't want you listening well who would like to who would like to kick us off i mean we always start with hate so who's feeling particularly hateful today i no one? I, I had i had a long and boring day at work so uh... done <laughs> good enough <laughs> you're in loose <laughs> i'm in i'm in and i, I brought the, the the big guns today like, oh. i feel like i felt this might be my one chance to be on this podcast so I'm, gonna <laughs> go for, I'm gonna go for my biggest ever hate really. oh my god good, goodness so my hate is inferior women's versions of things oh, oh. <laughs> what are we um, talking i agree <laughs> no it's just like, done right, okay. <laughs> no it's just like catch in like rayman and uh my i our voices then where we're both holding a glass of wine and you say that and we're like oh don't say anything controversial <laughs> it's time for me to have a sip of red wine <laughs> it's time for the two men to shut up <laughs> well no i mean originally uh originally my hate was going to be um the sort of technological trend known as the pink and shrink, which is when you take a piece of technology Mm. and about a year after it's been released and is very popular, you make it a little bit smaller and (laughs) colour it in pink Uh, to try and sell it to women. I understand. Um, But this actually doesn't it doesn't seem to happen quite as much anymore because I think people finally realise that you can just buy a funky phone case and so you don't need the phone itself to look all that funky. Um, but my, my hatred spreads further than that. It spreads to things like the fact that 
men's handkerchiefs are four times the size and five times the abs- absorbency of women's <laughs> handkerchiefs. Why is that? Is because it... my nose is no bigger than the average person, in my opinion. Well, <laughs> it's an opinion. In fact, it... I probably blow my nose more than you. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Do you carry a handkerchief? No, tissues. No. Ah, like oh, yes, the, no, there are an the, abundance uh, of tissues in Aloe the vera <laughs> ones, so my nose doesn't get ah. chapped. Oh, yeah, I hate that. I get like. Rough nose. <laughs> so, how do you feel then about? And I, the listeners can't see me using. John is doing air, inver- inverted yeah, air, air quotes. quotes. <laughs> uh, men tissues. You see those like clean man size. Yes. You yeah. have yeah. Man they're tissues. They're better because they're bigger. Did I buy those tissues? No, you didn't. Well, you, yes, you did. Did you, you buy had me them those tissues? We moved in. Did I? <laughs> They've been in the house for years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's normally like, you do, just kind of wipe your nose. Why is it called a man sized tissue? Do men have bigger sinuses? I don't understand. Or is it just like because men are so used to just starting a small fire and burning their snot <laughs> uh, that like when you know they're like, well, I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to buy a clearly a feminine tissue, and then you know the marketing team are like, ah, oh, but this is man sized, and I don't know, we, yeah. just, we just need yeah. to feel superior, so they're like, it's just yeah. a little bigger. But you know, it's just it, it it's a thing that spreads so far in the world, and I know I'm not the first person to point these things out. But you asked for my hate, and this is my hate. Well, that's, you know? that's fine. It's things like the fact that John has pockets in his pajamas, and I don't even have proper pockets in the jeans I am currently wearing. I, ha- I have four <laughs> yes. pockets in my pajamas. Yeah, it's where I keep my, you know, marbles, I keep uh, my, uh, yeah. slingshot. You know, got a jar. I, ke- I keep things in my pockets there. I don't even need. Yeah, just because I can. <laughs> I, I cannot keep anything in just about any set of pockets that I own in any set of clothing that I own if, unless yeah. I don't yeah. plan on ever sitting down. But why <laughs> do, you, do you think that's because women are expected to have a, expected to have a bag? Why should it should I not be a suit. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> hey, whoa, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah, whoa, hey, hey, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's things, you know, it, it spreads to other things like the fact that there is girls Lego and yeah. you can't mix the girls Lego in with the boys Lego because all the figures are the wrong size. Mm. So they're, it's built to a different scale. To that point, you might even you might even say, why call it Lego? Yeah. Call it Blocko or something like that. You know, if, they're not, if they don't interact in okay. any way. Surely the point of Lego is you shove it all in a big box when you're done with it yeah. and build something completely different out of it. And yeah. yes, but... Well, the the Big list the list goes on and on and on but there we go this this is a thing that irritates me on a daily basis even right. I was I was saying to Liz earlier the fact that if you go into a men's section of a clothes shop any popular clothes shop everything is arranged first by type then by style then by color then by size so it's like I want a pair of trousers I go to the trouser corner of the shop I need this style of trousers there it is I need this color of trousers there it is I need this size of trousers just look back until you get it. Women trying to find trousers. It's in 50 different locations around the shop. It's true. Like, I just need a pair of trousers. We're simple to <laughs> Online shopping, oh, yeah. Lucy. <laughs> yeah, but then I have to be in to pick it up or I have to get it delivered to true. work or something. You see, it's, it's, <laughs> I hate I hate clothes shopping. You see, that's ironic because I say you do a surprising amount Thank of you. clothes shopping. But I guess because they make it easy for you. Unlike but I've got a very, I've got a very specific look, which is a plain T-shirt mm-hmm. and dark jeans. That's pretty much my look, and I just buy clothes to suit that. You used to just like kind of bulk buy T-shirts, if I remember. When yeah, we lived probably, together. probably. Liz, I mean, is that still the case? Does he just have? T-shirts I buy still two on? or three at a time, and then just wear them until they're yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or I buy them for him. Liz, Liz may I'm have just turned oh. up of wearing of. <laughs> Washing his dirty clothes. So you're an enabler, basically, is what is what you're saying. Liz is an enabler in in all sorts of ways. All the, <laughs> all the things I collect. Oh, I've just bought you this. You didn't, not so much anymore. Mm. But now, <laughs> but previously. Well, now, oh, now, I've just bought you this lovely Star Wars now figure. She's living with you, so she's got to live. With exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> the, that's the difference. I think. I think, uh, like, uh, you know, the the male shopping experience is is very different because, and I would agree with you here I, in fact frankly i agree with you on all of this because yes dear uh, yes, you, yes do. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know like when when a man goes shopping you know you you walk into this kind of brutalist cave-like structure and you know you just nod at the uh, attendant and he locks the shop and gives you a whiskey and you know we both just skin an animal together and then <laughs> uh basically Start a fire yeah basically whatever you can make out of the remains uh, you just wear it out i mean you know 
And don't say another word to each other. Yeah, yeah. God no. Thing is, with with shopping generally, I can't wait to get the hell out of there. It's but they like... make it so easy for you to get yeah. the hell out of there. I that, think because yeah. like, uh, maybe men aren't sort of conditioned to to want to browse. Like mm. I've been told from a young age that it's meant to be fun for me to go shopping. Yeah. I hate shopping. Yeah, did so I. much. And yet it's meant to be like the key social thing that you do with your friends. And the town centre is full of women's clothes shops. And all the men's sections are like hidden at the back. <laughs> they don't look good, as good in the windows or something. <laughs> That's probably true. But then I'm definitely less decisive than you, Chris. Yes. <laughs> because Thank you, dear. you'll say, I want a mauve shirt. <laughs> and you will go in hunt of a mauve shirt. Whereas I'm like, I've got nothing to wear this uh, to this wedding. And we'll just go in hunt of anything <laughs> See, I could wear to I will a start wedding. With whatever fits me, because like, that's yeah. usually my issue. It's like I only. This is a, yet another irritation. Women's sizing no. because oh yeah, like Did what I... the hell is a size ten? Like, does well, anyone actually know? Bigger Shrug. than a size nine, and maybe not. Quite there is no, there is no there such is thing no as a size, size nine, John. <laughs> what? Come on. What? It's, but, it's even numbers. But what? Even, is that right? Yeah. 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 But you... even I, who don't even use the like the metric system on a daily basis, can roughly guess what a thirty-two inch waist looks like. Mm. <laughs> like, it's like yeah. well, what if you're like me and you're a size thirteen, and they only do things ten to twelve or fourteen to sixteen? Ah, ah. Well, you what see, do you I... do? What wow. do you do? I will, I will sympathise with you there because I have trouble buying trousers because apparently I'm, I'm just weird, weirdly shaped. I'm uh, 32, you know, getting a little, you know, that's a bit, that's a bit much, you know, it's a bit tight. <laughs> you know, 34, you know, it's like the, it's a bit baggy. Apparently, I'm just a, I'm a 33, but nobody manufactures a 33 waist. But it's the difference of one inch. That's true. Well, I it's mean, weight. That's or gain. Or gain. Yeah. 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 There's four of us, and we've got a lot. Of <laughs> we have time to factor. Yeah, um, yeah. I, 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 I just, um, you know, because clearly this is a, you know, it's a couples affair tonight. Um, oh yes, I, I go out with you, don't yeah. I? Uh, oh yes, I remember. We live together. It's, it's true. I remember. Lucy and I have been uh, preparing some invites for oh, our wedding. You're getting we're, married. That's right. We are, right. We are getting married. I remember. And I've been looking at the. Um, we have like a nice little photo. On the invite, which was taken yes. uh, like a year and a bit ago, on your birthday. Last on my year. birthday. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, last year. Last yeah. year, yeah. And um, I'd. This was when I was kind of like recovering from my surgery, yeah. <laughs> and all the doctors were like, "Eat plenty, like you know, get your weight back up." So I was eating like a lot of scones. Like <laughs> scones are my go-to. You're I was trying just... to say you look fat in your picture. I. I that's not true. Well, you say that, but Take like a mitt, this guy. I, basically, I. I I can link it back to clothes because I tend to buy a piece of clothing and then wear it for like a decade until it disintegrates. You uh, can wear your clothing for a decade before it disintegrates. Sorry, just to put yeah, it because back in like there. I said, I, I skinned the animal yeah. that you know harvested the sweet flesh that made it. Um, but no, I was I was wearing a blue shirt which I owned two years prior to that photo, and I continue to own today. And uh, I, I look at that photo, and I'm like. Yeah, that that was straining a bit. <laughs> like, um, I have to resign myself to the fact I'm never, I'm getting past the comfortable age of pretending I'm in Franz Ferdinand, and you know, I'm like, <laughs> I can't keep wearing like the skinny, the skinny shirts and the skinny ties and the skinny trousers anymore. But thankfully, the rest of the world has also moved on, so mm. it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, who bought the last Franz Ferdinand album? No one. Who? I think I've yeah. got it on Spotify. There you go. Yes. But everyone technically has got it on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, I exactly. put it into a playlist. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, but, I mean, didn't, but didn't you buy the last Franz Ferdinand album, dear? Well, I mean, yeah. sidebar, you're on it. I bought... Well, I know. I, I, I clicked save on Spotify. I mean, I, I, <laughs> hopefully they got a few pennies off the back of it. But a few royalties. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's the modern world. Nobody gets what they want. <laughs> So I mean, are we? Are, do we agree? Yes. I, th I agree. Judgment. I agree that that would judgery. be frustrating. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I agree, and I think certainly like the lack of pockets. Small oh yeah. I, I, pockets. I, if I didn't have pockets, I, I would literally have nowhere to put my things. I've Wait, got pockets right now. Have you? Has anyone heard of a utility kilt? I have no. heard of it. No. I've never seen one. In I real can life. imagine what it is. I know. I want to see one. 
I don't want to wear one. What is it? I would imagine it's a kilt with lots of pockets. Yeah, yeah. basically. Okay. It's like a tool belt, but there's kilt stuff attached to it. <laughs> I can't imagine a situation when you'd need that. If you were gardening? I guess In you... your kilt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you, you know, uh, you're on your way to some formal event maybe the queen's in town and you have scottish heritage and you pass like a flower bed which desperately, <laughs> desperately needs weeding and you're like i feel like there are a lot of provisos um, in I, yeah situation. i'm not sure that's a strong argument <laughs> if, if the queen actually. came came along and said ew look at that flower bed or, so, <laughs> or so, in the queen's voice and, and, oh, she's here tonight. And I'd be, yeah, amazing. yeah. And I'd be like, when did you get it? Uh, when and I'd be like, oh, I wish I bought my utility kilt. I think she'd be more inclined to say, oh, look at that. Look at that man's ass. Look at that pillock. What's look he at, wearing? Why is he bent <laughs> over like that wearing his kilt? <laughs> Can't he afford trousers? <laughs> Do we tax trousers? <laughs> yeah, what if we tax now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, apparently it's a thing. It's a thing enough where people talk about it online, so it must be true. Hmm. I feel you've got to be into kilts. I don't think you'd make the leap. From... I don't think you'd go straight to utility utility kilt. Yeah, you wouldn't just go. I'm going to buy. No, a I'd utility... probably buy a utility belt first, mm. and then maybe through the forums, I'd find out about the <laughs> utility kilt. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, I bought yeah I bought the uh, the J five hundred. No, I'm very happy with it. Very happy. <laughs> Well, that's that's me to to do my trade. <laughs> that's that's one of like the, uh, the reinforced splints yeah, along the yeah. side. It's got it's got real real belt potential. Yeah. Belting. You might got say. the double. Oh, pleating. that's very good. No, you got to get the one with the double pleating. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Fireproof. Oh, actually, I prefer the suede one myself. I, you know, Liz. Oh, what my, do you hate? My hate. Savers. So I was brought up in the uh, pubs. And just in the pub yeah. in the pub <laughs> and and have had many um barmaid jobs and so my hate is going to be people who dither at bars mm. and i feel oh. that customers and employees of pubs will understand this why are you reading yeah. a bottle why, why i'm just i'm, I'm, I'm doing an impression of someone <laughs> so, who might dither so i'll give you one example Somebody who comes to the bar have no idea what they want. And then they order one drink and then they say, and... And then they walk off. And they walk off to find <laughs> a friend that might want a drink. And then they come back and you're just waiting there. And everybody else is staring at you. Why are you not doing your job? And you're waiting for that customer. Why Why would you sacrifice prime territory at the bar? Mm. Like, particularly if it's busy. Just You'd guess. Be rude. Just so, guess. so as a customer, you'd probably be annoyed that the bar is busy and this person has got this chance to order their drink and is faffing. Mm. I mean, it's not good. You're talking from the the vendor's perspective. Yeah, but also from the customer. Yeah. Yeah. Because I... if you're waiting to be served, I and you're waiting for this. Yeah. See, I think you've tapped into. Uh... You know, we, we've had a bit of a recur oh, of all the hatreds we've had in our three episodes so far. Mm. I think there's been a recurring hatred <laughs> of people, 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 people in humans, <laughs> but I think people who dither, for lack of a better word, or kind of like you know, yes, it's your moment true. to step up to the plate, and you just fumbled it. You just kind of, you just kind of screwed it. You know, and it's like it's the same. The person you're describing is the same person who it's rush hour. You're trying to get onto the train. And they walk all the way up to the turnstile, yeah. stop, and start rummaging in their wallet to get the ticket. It's like, everybody hates you. What are you doing? You're, yes. you're, you're killing us all. Why? Yes. Yeah. It's like it's not like you queued at the bar and were surprised that you found a bar. Yeah. At the start yeah. of it. Oh like, my God. Well, like, you've deliberately <laughs> gone yeah. to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's not like you accidentally want a beer. Yes. Like, oh, you, I mean, maybe maybe if it's a particularly long queue, you forgot why you were there. Mm. <laughs> yes. I was saying I often have trouble getting served at bars because I don't know why, but people just look straight over me at bars. Like, I'm not that short. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lucy, I told you, yeah. it's because you need bigger boobs. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yes, but like I said, unless Lego starts bringing out like Lego bras, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Like, <laughs> we assumed that was the next logical step from like Lego yeah, elves yeah. was Lego bras. What you're hearing <laughs> is the sound of two, two men... Tactfully not saying anything <laughs> <laughs> on this side of the room. That's quiet we were there. Ooh. <laughs> it's good wine. So, in addition to my point, 
as an employee of bars, pubs, clubs, um, also it's very annoying when customers put their money in the pool of slops that is gathered on the oh, bar. Yeah, that's and rank. so now you have wet five pound notes. And also when they order the Guinness last. Uh, yeah, so that's yes. just bad. Oh, I, don't yeah, just yeah. I know next to nothing about alcohol and even I know that's a bad idea. Yes, thank you. <laughs> order the Guinness first, let it settle, then yes. order your drinks. I, I I can Lucy, I feel like we're in a similar camp here, because for the longest time I just couldn't get served at bars. Like, you know, I I you know, I I imagine I'm I'm picturing like it's a really it's a heaving night, kinda of like in really busy weather spoons. And it becomes a bit of like a you know, you're trying to get attention. You're at the bar, you know, the bar you the bar staff, they're busy enough as it is, you know. Everyone no one's happy. No one's having a good time there. Which is a shame because it's a bar. You'd think, yeah. <laughs> you know, all all of, all of that, you know, readily available depressant. You yeah, know, it's yeah. amazing people aren't having an amazing time. So, yeah, like, <laughs> I'd um, I'd be at the bar for so long, you know, I'd have plenty of time to formulate everything I'm going to say. Like, I just want to get mm. in and get out. No, I can totally sympathise it. Well, we had it literally before we came here. Yeah. People were at the bar and they knew I was next, and they still just went ahead and ordered. I, I ended up having to just interrupt a bloke and went, no, it's me, actually. That's a bit of a side point, though. Did he... No, it is a side point. Yeah, but, but did he then kind of like, the people who were jumping ahead of you, were they taking ages? Um, relatively. No, I... no, some of them were. They were getting cocktails and, oh, I'll have four pints of this. And then and then they'd give them the four pints. And then they'd say, and a cocktail. Mm. And then they'd make the cocktail. And did it, just order them all at once. Yeah. yeah. And if you it, repeat bar, yourself yeah. if you need to, but all of them all. Mm-hmm. So even, I mean, again, not a drinker and don't order an awful lot of alcohol and don't even know how to pronounce most of the names of hmm. various beers on things. But yeah. even I know that the people behind the bar have enough experience that if I rattle off a list, they're probably going to get it right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so this is actually FYI, an FYI, behind listeners, the bar. three drinks at a time. Three drinks. Gin and tonic, two pints of lager. Okay, I'll go. Give me the next three. Ah. Yeah. That's what I need. Ah. <laughs> That's because, a good tip. Yeah. Because like it's easier to remember three, or because like you can physically do th- make do three, yeah, and then by the time you're time. done, they can they can then have their th- other three ready, and you can just crack straight on. Yeah, you can hold three in your brain. You can pour three at a time. That that's what I want. But also in on Chris's point, um, as a barmaid, you wouldn't believe how many people don't make eye contact with you when they're trying to get served. Oh, and right. so so when it's like heaving at the bar and you've like as people have arrived you tried to clock one two three and then you and then you miss four five six you forget who it is and so you sort of look around for anybody that will make eye contact and you go who's next please and you wouldn't believe how many people just don't make eye contact with you yeah. so the first person who makes eye contact with you you're right right you must be next I'll serve you. But then people get uppity and you're like, well, why didn't you look at me? Yeah. Mm. Hmm. So I think that's the key thing. Eye contact. Do you suppose it's because they're drunk? You know, they're physically struggling to focus? I think- on- <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because this is normally like, so I've predominantly worked in sports clubs. So they've been in the changing rooms. They finish their sport, been in the changing rooms, and they all sort of come to the bar at once. So they haven't really had a drink yet. Is it performance anxiety? You know, like, <laughs> I don't know. They're coming up to the bar and they're like, you know, okay, this is my moment. This is my moment. <laughs> Who, who's ready? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> don't, don't look at me. I you think, know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So I, I have a, I mean, just a complete sidebar here. I actually have a very slight stutter, which doesn't rear its ugly head all that often. Um, but when it does, I will be utterly unable to start a sentence and i've had usually it hits me when i'm in a line somewhere Uh. waiting to (laughs) waiting to place an order and i will get to that that moment where you're in front of a person who's just waiting for your order and i will find myself physically unable to speak (laughs) which is which is very frustrating i'm not saying that everybody who does this as a bar has a strange social anxiety stutter (laughs) but it's it's not always that they're completely bladdered <laughs> or no. uh, maybe, the... maybe but this is another reason why I generally send John to buy things at bars hey. um... <laughs> and now I own a rather snazzy yellow jacket yeah that, much that helps you're, very, <laughs> you're very noticeable John oh, and I, I, I feel like lacking any like um, 
really distinctive physical features or like a well good... you got rid of your mustache i did get rid of a mustache mm. you see that's the thing look at it there's a there's a there's a case history here of john affecting like really pronounced <laughs> physical things <laughs> just to stand out it's like oh you know i'd like the guy who had a mustache the guy who always wears a hat in hindsight john do you regret ripping one of your eyes out <laughs> it's a hell of a statement. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. a hell of a conversation starter. I've got to say, but no. Now I just wear a yellow jacket to compensate for the fact no, that my face is apparently incredibly forgettable. <laughs> 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 it's been an easy one so far. Yeah, this episode. It's very I think, hard. I think we're all equally hateful of people. Who it's very hard away. to disagree with anything. Yeah. I feel like we're kind of like because there's four of us, we're having to like kind of like power through them. Yeah, probably. Come on, say something. Say something controversial. I well, I'm gonna. I need a prop for what I'm gonna do a now. Prop. Oh, I've been holding a prop in my hand. It's my telephone. Put that knife down. <laughs> you. Why don't you make me? Um, <laughs> I'm holding a telephone, and I'm gonna play you an audio clip. Oh. And then I'm gonna explain why I hate it specifically. Have you got it queued up? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Have you considered? A mortgage. I'm, I feel like from Liz's reaction to that clip, she's going to disagree with you here. No, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm no, not sure I don't she is. disagree. But what, uh, is it music? Do you hate? Uh, no, tunes? that is that is the sound of Liz's alarm uh, uh, <laughs> that goes off at six thirty every morning. Uh, it's the morning noise. <laughs> suddenly, I don't want to be in the room. Like yeah. You just wandered into a domestic. Well, it's not a domestic. It's no. that I think everyone hates the sound of their alarm clock. You become accustomed to just hating that noise. For crying out loud, I mean, we, we gave Nick a hard time for lowballing it last week. I mean, <laughs> alarms. Yeah, your alarm clock. Right. But that's, that, no, that noise specifically now cuts through me like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> Are you? Have you gotten to the point where you're waking up like two minutes before it's about to go off? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And I'm waiting for it. Yeah. I, I know it's coming. However, you... I get up. What three quarters? You of an actually hour put it. You, you put it on snooze, and then it goes off again. <laughs> so it wakes that. me up twice <laughs> every day. Do, do, do you need the alarm? Are you the kind of person who, if there is no yes. alarm, you just not get up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need. I need the alarm. Are you like if if so? Like tomorrow, we have to be up for a wedding. Oh no! But we only have to wake up at like nine o'clock. So naturally, I would wake up at about eight, half eight. Right. Yeah. However, I need to be up at. What time's my alarm? Quarter to seven. You're not saying and that's, quarter to seven that's, tomorrow. That's morning. not normal. I can't get up for that. Yeah. <sighs> I. Uh, John, I can't get We can all redirect our hatred to John because he's hey. the most morning person. Yeah. Hey, I love mornings. In, I can't get world. enough of them. <laughs> you morning. literally had an entire yeah. podcast yeah. series about how you like to get up in the morning. Hey, look, even I had my limits. Like, I... I... <laughs> <laughs> the only reason we're doing a show called Hate is that I was like, no, John's going to have relaxing mornings now. We'll scrap the other podcast, which is entirely about me getting out of bed and brewing coffee. And we'll do this whenever we'll we do this in the evening. We'll do it in the evening. It's delightful. I, you... sorry, oh, sorry, I've just go for interestingly, it. I, I, in segue to your hatred of the particular noise that that alarm makes. Mm. Um, we used to use John's phone as an alarm before hey, we actually uh... got an alarm clock. Yeah, and you always just use the default tone uh, on the alarm which is i yeah. think it's literally just called like good morning or something and it's a chirpy little tune that i hate to the deepest blackest part of my soul doesn't it yeah doesn't you know it, where i'm going with doesn't this doesn't it sound like it's on a marimba yeah like it's yeah. a bit kind of hawaiian kind it is of yeah like, and uh... but someone at work has um been having to take some medication lately and they just have to take regular pills they've been ill they have to take regular pills so they have an alarm on their phone oh, right, to okay. tell them during the day at work. <laughs> is it like when every... they and that's the same thing. And How it is the have... same default Pills. alarm. <laughs> is, it every... Pills. is it every ten minutes or they'll die? It's every, <laughs> it's every few hours. But I'm saying, the first few times it went off, I was quite confused. <laughs> yeah, what is God, where am I? What's that? <laughs> am I waking up? I, because um, Rayman just, uh, you know, fixed me with a little look. Um, I was going to say off camera, but off mic. Oh dear. That's a good sound. <laughs> That's the sound of a cork popping. That might be Great. my love. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like morning coffee Boring. all over again. But morning wine. Thank you kindly. <laughs> yes, hand me that wine. Um, just before I went to university, uh, I got a present, and I can't remember who it was from, but it was an alarm clock where you could record your own... <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go go well. further, John. <laughs> you could record your own uh, message and just before going to uni my good friend chris ray who's right here hello 
uh, recorded a, a very personalised <laughs> wake up message, which was. Would you like me to do it now? Please, yeah. Right. Morning, John Locke. Morning. And uh, I, I kept that, and that was my wake up call for about three years. I my think. voice must really grate on you. Um, I do not enjoy your presence, no. um, but so much so that that um, when I was at uni and I got into student radio, we actually used that voice clip. I think I just Did played you? it into the mic uh, to form the basis of the morning show we used to do. I didn't um, know that. Well, there you go. There You're you go. famous in many ways. In fact, I have a friend from uni. Only one. It didn't really catch up on, but. To this day, he still greets me with "Morning, John Rock. Morning, because of you. <laughs> there you go. It's entirely because oh, of you. And check that I, out. I think that alarm clock broke or something like oh, that. Like it, you destroyed it, didn't you? I did. You yes. chucked it at a wall. I I think I've had a long and colourful history of alarm clocks. Like I, I I remember as a kid being. You get these weird ideas when you're young, but like I remember at one point at Christmas, I asked for an alarm clock. Not that I had kind of any trouble getting up as a kid. It was simply was that. It, was it a slash something? Because I remember my brother always getting an alarm clock for Christmas, but it was what? always not just an alarm Every clock. Year. Yeah. Did he? Did he? Yeah. Eat his alarm clock. <laughs> no. He just slept through them all. <laughs> he needs another one. It was Give him another like, one. Slash a light, or slash a pen, or slash radio, yeah. or slash something Sleeping else. Pills. Like yeah. it was. It was never just an alarm clock. This isn't just an alarm clock. This is a marks and spaces. Professor rolls. But no, I I wanted the stereotypical like uh, classic. Two bells on top, little mechanic alarm. Oh, kind of. oh that so, sounds like hell. They're so loud. Going yeah. off, yeah. That I'd just like, be jumping every why? morning. Why? But I don't know. I was a kid. I was young. I was foolish, and um, <laughs> but I loved it. And but it was a proper. You'd you'd have to crank it like a you know to to wind it up, and then it would just God. just the coiled rage would just be held. <laughs> you could see it trembling. It'd be held back, <laughs> by little, held back by a little arm, and then it would just, just go for it. Oh, and I seem to remember it had no way. It was because of course. It was a 12-hour clock, yeah. like it was just 1 to 12, and then it went around twice. And uh, so when you set the alarm, you just moved like a little arm to when you want it to, so it would go off twice a day. There was no way of stopping <laughs> it. Oh, my God. So your parents probably loved that. Oh, God, yes. No. I mean, but also, like, I, uh, growing up, I always had, I had two clocks in my bedroom. I don't know why. We have three. Okay, that's fine. Are they? No, yeah, we do. Have are they that's like two phones? Are they digital? Are they like analog? Are they old school? Do they tick? I think is the question. Yeah, um, one's a ticker, but it doesn't a... work. Yes, <laughs> so doesn't tick. Well, I um I had these proper ticking clocks, and to the point where they were both of them going at once, but my brain kind of learnt to edit them out, so I never really heard it. But then I remember I had a I had a friend from secondary school, uh, stayed over one night. And I remember him just saying, how do you sleep in this? <laughs> it's, it's deafening, like this cacophony kind of cacophony. Of how do you do it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm personally quite comfortable with having very loud timekeeping devices. <laughs> in, in the bed. <laughs> and also I have no trouble getting out of bed yeah, in the morning. No. I mean, I've, I've had a variety of alarm clocks. I'm not, my 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 history of not being able to get out of bed is, yeah, well, well, sort of legendary. Not the <laughs> worst in my family. I um I used to be used, used to be sort of the first one up in the morning and get stuff done, um, but my sister is notorious for being completely incapable of getting out of bed, <laughs> and I don't think she listens to this, so she probably won't mind me. Yes. <laughs> well, you say like notorious, but does she not have like clinical insomnia? Are we picking she, she on had, someone who, as a teenager, <laughs> she had clinical insomnia in that literally. Her brain did not make enough of the chemical that makes you no, go to sleep. No. Really? Um, it's called it's, alcohol. Yeah. It's, hey. I don't think it's particularly. <laughs> it's, it's all the best. <laughs> Chink. Like they, they, they put her on some kind of. She was actually in a test group for an experimental drug for it, um, and it worked wonders. But then, of course, once the experiment yeah. stopped, so did the drugs. <laughs> um, but we used to get her alarm clocks that were designed to force her to get out of bed to turn them off. Right, um, yeah. So either <laughs> step one was put the alarm clock on the other side of the room. Yes. Um, that didn't work because she would just sleepwalk over to the, <laughs> yeah. the alarm, turn oh it off God. and go back to bed. Um, 
Step two was we bought an alarm clock that had a helicopter propeller stuck on the top of it. Nice. So I heard this it would, on radio it would too. It fly the off the top of the alarm and supposedly it was supposed to go hide in the room somewhere. Uh-huh. So you have to get up and go find it. So it's like that's, <laughs> and to put that's it a back bit more in. active. She learned how to sleepwalk doing that as well. Oh, that's um, a talent though, isn't it? And yeah. then the final one was a little commended. alarm clock with wheels that was designed to try and find a dark place. So it had like a little light sensor in it. And when the alarm went off, it would jump off your bedside table and just try to find somewhere dark. So it would try to hide like under your bed or under. <laughs> I'm, oh not sure, I'm not sure I'd be able to sleep knowing that this horrible AI was in my room. I mean, there's a guy. It's, you saying that's just reminding me of a story I read a week ago, which was a guy <laughs> was staying at a Premier Inn, and he <laughs> he moved, he put because at Premier Inn notoriously you've only got one plug point really, and it's on the desk. So he moved his bed, so he blocked the entrance to his room, but it was right by the desk. So he was just playing on his phone, and when his alarm went off, he just put it on snooze, rather than have to get up and walk along the room. Just moved his bed instead. Legend. (laughs) But yes, so, alarm clocks. I understand the hatred. Yes. Um, I'm ashamed that I do occasionally need them. Um, I understand. I I ignored this one. (laughs) (laughs) However, I chose that uh, tune... I hate it. <laughs> because it sounds like a tune from Friends. Does it? Which one? Happy, happy Hanukkah, Chandler and Monica. Yeah? No? I. It has been far too long since I watched. Fine. Oh, Fine. I'll, I'll accept and that as so, a point so made. Previous to that, I think I had, I think it was Dallas, like... Oh, gosh. Isn't that the A-team? Is it the that is the A-team. I was going to go with A-team and then I was like, no, I think it's Dallas. Damn it! I was like, no, Liz, you've got Can we this. cut this bit out, John? <laughs> no, it's fine. No. <laughs> no! You can't edit out the, the silly bits. I am just on the subject of alarm clocks and our absent friend, uh, Richard Holton. Oh, I don't know a Richard Holton. Uh, I remember when a time when we were all living together in uh, the House of Trouser. Mm-hmm. And I've also lived with Holton when I, when we were in Canada together and um, he was always a joy in the mornings <laughs> but not his, a morning person is he his alarm would go off and if I'm <laughs> if I was awake already it was the same every day the alarm would go off you just hear oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd hear it kind of <laughs> shuffling around the house <laughs> like his abs he hated it he Absolutely hated mornings. Like the the general disgust on his face, and we were cross paths with him in the morning. He's like, "You're right, Holton. Hey, Raymond, he's dead. Sorry, Raymond's just dying off, off mic at the moment." So I was told a theory. Oh God! That it was about what time you were born. So if you're born in the morning, you're more of a morning p- person. That's when you're most active but if you were born at night you're more of a oh. nighttime person and actually i was born at uh four minutes past nine in the morning and that is definitely when i'm most awake she's saying every time you wake up at your natural time it's it's like simulating birth all over again. <laughs> and your eyes kind of snap open uh, no and it's i just probably didn't screaming. think that it's far ahead. Nothing but screaming. <laughs> yeah but were you born in the morning john no it's 5 p.m oh damn it <laughs> <laughs> But um, I do know I, I had a real kind of scare once when I first found my own my own birth certificate because my birth certificate does not have my birthday on it. Oh, it has oh. a different what? date on it, <laughs> and apparently it's purely because I was born so close to the start of the year there was no one available to register my birth. <laughs> 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 so the date on my birth certificate is the date they could get a registrar. <laughs> I acknowledge that I existed. I don't, I don't oh know. God. I don't know enough about anything. But does your birth certificate, yeah, have to have? Is it meant to have your birthday on? I mean, I guess this must happen a lot because like people get born on a Sunday, and then the, yeah. you know the, the registry office isn't going to be open until Monday, right? So my granddad technically has two birthdays. Ah, leap day. year. No, 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 no. What? No, no, <laughs> no. A, leap, a leap year. Yeah, so every four years, years, technically people are just like, they're like 50, Yeah, but they're only 12 or whatever. Yeah, so that doesn't mean they have two birthdays a year. But for a given amount of technical. But it means they have to switch their birthday to a different day. Okay, I understand. But on a a leap year... Go on, sorry, John. On a leap year, they wouldn't like, oh, it's it's a 28th of Feb, it's my birthday. And then the next day, it's my birthday again. 
uh, you know, I bloody would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're you're a, you're a human monster. <laughs> um, no, like uh, my granddad was like he was born on he was born in September, I believe, and then uh, but his, I think his birth certificate says October. Mm. So I don't think he ever milked it to the point where he would celebrate both. But we were certainly aware of it. I mean, I don't know how common it is. I just remember it giving me a bit of a turn, like when when you first see it, like oh, this is an important <laughs> document from my childhood, and it, it says like the wrong date on it. <laughs> so is the date. To, is it listed as your birth date or is it the date that the I document it, well, was Well, the completed? only date on it is like the date of registration of birth, oh, I guess. Because don't you have three weeks? I guess you must to... I, I don't know how common yeah. this is. I guess most of the time these days you're born in a hospital. There's probably a registrar there that can just go, yes, human exists. Yeah. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it's a crime to not report a birth or a death, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Like... I don't know how many people get arrested every year for failing to do such a thing, but it's kind of mad when you think about yeah. it. That was a bit of a mad segue, but yes, I have no idea what yes. time it is. Alarm clocks are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are, are we. Ju- I mean, like I, I, I feel like I have to disagree just in principle about alarm clocks because <laughs> I'm weird and I enjoy. I enjoy the sound. You're a freak. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a morning person. What can I say? I can, I can empathise with you, Chris, because I feel the same thing for yeah. another noise entirely. I, um, I also, however, I'm the one who has to get up when that alarm goes off, and you get another three quarters of an hour in bed. So I do not sympathise with you. You could rotate it, like you could pick a different tune each day, <laughs> just to keep him on his toes. Like the hot hits. Of- <laughs> I'm not sure I'd react actually to another tune now. I don't know how that would go. We have a, um, we've got like a little, um, our, our um, alarm clock projects the time onto the ceiling. Oh, that, sounds oh. awful. that sounds awful. It took a bit of getting used to. Like, I like it because I can see the time without putting my glasses on. Yeah. It's big on the ceiling. But I think we, ha- I think we had to train our brain because when we got it for the longest time, all I could think of when I woke up in the morning was like, oh, I was awake all night. I remember seeing the clock saying one, two. Yeah. Oh, it does it all clock. night. It just shines it constantly. Oh, no. But it's quite no. subtle and you do get used to yeah. it. And... Yeah, yeah, I'm completely used to it. I, I wouldn't I've stop a, looking at it. I've had an alarm clock in the past that does the same thing. Really? Oh. But maybe on an average... I'd struggle. But maybe, maybe that's the thing, though. Maybe on, in an average night, you might open your eyes for like a few seconds. But, you know, you're not quite awake. But the difference now is that the if, time the, ti- is if the time is on forever the being kind of blasted <laughs> on the ceiling, you can't help but kind of be aware of it. Hmm. You're giving, yes. me, you're giving me a weird design, look from the other side bit. of the room. It doesn't sound like something I'd want to do. I'm pointing at well, Liz I'm because she talks because, in her sleep. Yes, oh. I knew that was coming up. <laughs> and last night she goes, she said to me randomly, it's overflowing. <laughs> and I went, you what? It's overflowing. Oh, it's everywhere. And I just went, I just went, okay. <laughs> and then you started laughing and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go back to sleep now. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've been I've been physically assaulted in my sleep, uh, but... Uh, yeah, I that... guarantee I was protecting you from something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been elbowed in the face more than once. Oh, God, no, I... Uh, I've been attacked in my sleep. I, uh, I... Well, it's all coming out now. I, uh, I, was, I was just, like, innocently lying there, oh, trying, sure. trying to sleep, sure, you know. Sure. And uh, I just hear from the other side of the bed, I sure you can! And this knee... <laughs> I did not shut up. Elaborating. This knee kind of uh, wreathed in fire just kind of shoots right up my ass, like, 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 like right up my ass uh, to the point where I'm like, Jesus, what just happened? And and you know, sounds sort of, like common assault to me. Yeah, I know. If you did that in the street, you'd be arrested. And, uh, and there's no movement next to me, like kind of, still, you know, and I'm like, oh fine, and I just kind of like you know, roll over. A few seconds later. Oh, did I, uh, did I, did I, did I kick you, darling? He's like, yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm, I'm coughing, coughing up teeth over here. Yeah. What, what happened? <laughs> Ambulance is on its way. <laughs> oh, Lucy. Show us, show us on a punching bag where, uh, where, 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 where the knee entered you. <laughs> hey, darling. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Every, uh, everyone has something. <laughs> everyone has a thing. <laughs> I brutalise my you, fiance. You made me spend my twenty eighth birthday in A and E. Yeah, who know. put me there? No, 
<laughs> so I had to remove a knee from this wine. Is like, this is like couples counselling. Yes. I know, God, we should give more wine, please. Let's move on. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, no. You haven't so, done your hate. I haven't done my hate. hate. <laughs> okay, uh, I feel you'd have to have a heart of stone to disagree with me. Uh, we Okay, we've all received marketing emails. Oh, here we past. go. Hey guys, and welcome to the intermission for episode four of a show called Hate. Uh, we hope you're enjoying uh, the festivities so far. I guess a massive thank you to Lucy and Liz for stepping in at the last minute to replace Nick, who has uh, shamefully abandoned us to head off to Japan with Ali. Um, but in all seriousness, we wish them nothing but happiness as they embark on married life together. It's all very exciting. Um, they're setting a very good example for when Lucy and I tie the knot in January. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, it's time for a little bit of housekeeping. Um, to all fans of Big Punch, um, be it our games, comics, podcasts, whatever, we have one more show before the year is over. One more convention. Uh, we will be attending uh, MCM London at the end of October. Uh, last weekend of October, down at the Excel Centre, our kind of home away from home, uh, we'll be bringing all the comics and fury and passion and fire that you've come to expect from Big Punch when attending a show. Uh, we will have the um, the first uh, public appearance of Afterlife Inc. Volume 4, Man Made God, which is quite exciting. So, if you weren't one of the initial Kickstarter backers uh, and you haven't checked out the score on our website, now is your time to grab a coffee. We're very excited. We took a bit of a break from conventions to get through a very busy summer with weddings and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's good to be back on the horse. Um, uh, in podcast news, um, trying to think. Uh, we, have, we have just finished uh, season one of Cuckoo's First Flight, which is uh, our kind of experimental RPG podcast in which we are attempting to play and develop uh, a brand new RPG tabletop role playing system from scratch set in the uh, universe of Extraversal. Uh, you can listen to the whole series now on our website on www.bigpunchstudios.com forward slash podcasts and Lucy and I are in the process of typing up our show notes so very soon we're going to be releasing those to the public so if you want to uh, listen along at home that's something you can uh, sorry listen along at home play along at home that's something you can do uh, we'll be giving those out to our patrons for free otherwise we'll be putting them up on our Gumroad store and uh, yeah I guess the only other thing to be aware of is um we are very, very, very grateful to all the comments, uh, submissions, uh, retweets, shares, everything you've been giving us so far with the show called Hate. I think we're off to uh, a very good start and it's proving to be a pleasure. So we've got one more week where Nick will not be with us and we'll find, um, uh, we'll find another guest star to come in and be hateful with us. But we look forward to welcoming him, welcoming him back in uh, two episodes time and getting back to the regular kind of proceedings and all that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we would absolutely love it if you could spread the gospel of hate and share the show with anyone you think might enjoy it. And as ever, uh, a kind of a review or a rating on iTunes would, could really make all the difference. We'd be so grateful if you could do that. So thanks again. Uh, and I now return you to the show where you can hear us talk about a bit more hate, a few loves, and you can hear Rev and I get slowly drunk on wine. Good wine. Okay, so we all receive marketing emails, uh, and occasionally they are, you know, cold calling, as they say. Like, mm. you'll get an unsolicited piece of marketing. Uh, we have just learnt, I feel, as a society, to ignore these. That's fine. Mm. So I block them. Exactly. In the exactly. hopes that they'll get blacklisted and not be able to send any emails to anyone ever again. Yes. But, but that's wise. I mean, like advertising was nearly my hate, by the way. <laughs> Duh. Okay, but but we we for, we you know we have a company email, and because we are a company, as recognised by the law, we get a lot of marketing. Which is like, hey, you're a company, clearly you want to hire vans. Or you're a company, clearly you'd like a water um, dispenser in your oh, office. Oh yeah, we get you know, those a lot, yeah. All this kind of stuff. And like, they have no idea whether you are employing 4,000 people, or no people, or whether you're, whether you're a butcher, or, I don't know, a chartered accountant. They have no idea, they just see that you're a business. So... We uh, we received some marketing emails uh, about a convention, about a 
comic convention, oh, if you will. Yeah. That so, seems applicable to you. Well, it is our business. You don't mind me saying. And they were like, hey, like we're running a convention. It's great. You should come along. And we were like, okay, well, you know, they're never like, hey, here's a free table. They're like, we want you to come and buy a table. So we're like, oh, okay, well, look, check it out. It's not the right time of year. Uh, it's quite expensive. It would involve a lot of travel. So we're like, okay, it's just not for us. You ignore it. A few days later, you get another one. Mm. We're like, okay, their marketing, their marketing team is quite enthusiastic. You know, but they're not addressed. It's not addressed by name. It's not like, hey, John. You know, it's just like we think you would be interested. It's just utter. They don't know me. I don't know them. Ignore it. A few days later, another one. A few days later, another one. It's like, okay, fine. They're just you know aggressive marketing. But then the email, the tone of the emails mm. starts to change, and it becomes very like, hey, why, why, why aren't you replying? You know, like, hey, what, what, what's the deal? You know, and I continue to ignore them. And then they're getting a bit more pleading, a bit more kind of like, hey, why? Hey, you're kind of wasting my time. Why don't you reply? You know, like, it's like you don't even know my name. Is you're it not... a personal email then or is it just a... Uh, there was no... In the... I... A mass email <sighs> template. Yeah, my guess is that certain emails go to people who don't reply. Yeah. I, you, do you use MailChimp? I think you do. I use it in my you, work, Yeah. Yeah. I think you probably can send different emails to people who have replied, target people who people who have responded, opened, yeah. people who have not done anything with them. And surely, I think you are probably one of those unfortunate few, but surely, or many, as it can be. What, what I'm saying, like, but my point is, if you were contacting, say, you just had a list of like 500 people to contact, just to see what happened, and then like 400 don't reply, mm. you might then send a follow up saying, "Hey." Not sure if you got my previous email, like, or, you know, try a different tack. You know, try and market it in a different way. I've got your kids. But these were getting increasingly personal. <laughs> like, basically, like, hey, what, what, what's your problem? Mm. Why aren't you replying? You know, uh, to the point they were, like, obsessive, like, saying, you must reply. Why aren't you replying? Like, you're hurting me. You're physically hurting me by not did replying. Did you reply? I did. Oh, did No, I said, I said, hey, so-and-so, because they kept signing off with one name. And I, I basically was a little short with them. I said, look, you know, this was unsolicited. You didn't ask for your email. You didn't even personalise it. Why the hell? I didn't say that. I was a lot more polite. But I was like, why the hell? <laughs> That's not even rude. No, but I, was like, but I was like, why the hell should we reply? It's like, look, we're not interested. We don't owe you a reply. You contacted us out of the blue. And you, like I said, you didn't even reach out to us personally. And then they replied, and they were really kind of like indignant, like, "Oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you know, oh, it's, really? it's okay. my job to promote a thing." So I don't know. But that... The thing is that this has happened multiple times now. Really? Yeah. Like we have had multiple series of this email. I figure there must be there's some online marketing correspondence course or something that mm. is teaching people mm. to write these kind of guilt emails to try yes. and guilt people into mm. responding to your marketing yeah. which is why i block well, because see, you... then you just get added to a blacklist <laughs> we see you've you've True. i was trying to like that was one particular example i was trying to find a way to like quantify it into a greater hate mm -hmm. but i think you've done it quite well because marketing i feel is a necessary evil i partake in marketing like we can't avoid it it's necessary but this particular trend for like guilt spamming people i think is is pretty horrible actually i, mm. I kind of despise it we've had oh what's like another example like oh yeah this annoys me as well people called contacting you and then going like just going hey so i've taken the liberty of setting up a meeting for us yeah. you know yes. like uh, yes there I we go i was just gonna you know. say um at my previous job um fundraiser for a charity i used to get ones that said oh i've got a I've booked in a meeting and things. I'd also get some that said following our telephone conversation mm. that we never had mm. and things like that. They really try and get you. But um, the main, well, there was lots of companies that I'd never even heard of and it would be like a different name at the same company address that would keep coming through. So even when I blocked them, it would be a different person um. at da -da -da. But uh, I used to pick Christmas cards for the charity and a lot of the Christmas card 
retailers i don't know what they're wholesalers wholesalers yeah. yeah suppliers used to do that whole meeting thing and they'd send me an email saying i've taken the liberty of setting up a meeting on this date and i'd be like no you, dolly. you are taking far too much liberty yeah. with the liberty taking yeah entirely yeah it's rude i just like it. thing is i've i've got it my job my job's quite unique in a lot of ways i've got the flexibility to tell someone to fuck off oh my <laughs> frankly there we go well, there's the explicit rating right, on, on the episode <laughs> if i need to i can tell a call center to do one mm. and i have done well I, I i i can the problem is i can sympathize with people in the call center like it, it's not the best. Nobody wants to be doing that job. Yeah, it's <laughs> but not this the best is all scenario. automated, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. By the seam of it. Well, it's like you get those phone calls from the robot lady who doesn't even know she's only talking to the answering machine. Oh, we've so had so get, many of those. You yeah. only get like the yeah. the last half of whatever this vital <laughs> yeah. message is, and it's like who's even bothering? Because if a human being answers, they hang up immediately that they hear mm, it's not an actual person. Yeah. And if the answer phone answers, you miss the first half of the message, so nobody has any idea yeah. what it was anyway. Well, like, if I, if I, because I've had a few phone calls, you know, who mystery numbers turning up, and because again, we we are a company, you know, mm. people can find our records, and you know, it's like if I see a number and it's like four X's a Q of, <laughs> and the Batman symbol, ah, yeah. it's like I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to answer, <laughs> but like. Occasionally you get these numbers and they're they're real UK numbers and I'm like, Oh, maybe this is important, so mm. I answer. And they always have this pattern now. It's never like, Oh, can I have a few minutes of your time? They're like, Oh hey, I'm calling from you know, and they kinda of like mumble it. You're like, What? Who 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 are you calling from? And yeah, an exact presumption where they're like, Okay, so we we just want to set you up for a consultation call, you know, and it's like, Whoa, whoa. Whoa, take five steps back. What are we talking about? What are you selling? You know, why should I care? Yeah. Mm. And, oh, man, it's just... It's just... That's the situation where, because, again, I'm I'm mean to people who try to sell me things. Yes, I, um, would, I am. That's yeah. the situation where I put the phone down. Don't don't hang up. Just put it down. Nice. Come back ten minutes later, see if they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's a good plan. Once I played Muzak down them, I found the, a Muzak playlist on YouTube and I just played that through my headphones down the phone at them. They were on there for like an hour. I didn't think they could hang up. <laughs> well, with a lot of places, they're not allowed to. Yeah. They're not allowed to disconnect the call. Yeah. Which, you're lucky it's just me being an asshole. Like, it could yeah. be someone who's actually being abusive and they can't hang up on you. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to give them an hour's break. <laughs> yeah. I was on the phone. Fa- this woman called my new place of work and um and she phoned up and she was like hello i'm from such and such a company how are you today why (laughs) (laughs) and you're like instantly you're like i know what you're trying to do and so i sort of said like i'll stop you right there we're not interested Mm. and she was like well actually i just i just phoned to say you know this is what we do and if you and i was like no no and literally i tried to get rid of her so many times and she still kept going was she a bit indignant you know like when, was... when you when you said like i'm not in you know i don't care she, she's like oh oh no like you know they turn it on you yeah like, like it's and your she fault even, she even said to me she said oh you've been so polite to me i get so much abuse i'm not surprised yeah, yeah. i like i like the idea Your that one of them would phone up to steal time from other people's lives yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like like what is their success rate is it one in a thousand yeah. hello how a... are you today well actually i've lost a limb and my boss has been very sexually abusive <laughs> what can you do for me it's like, it's like how are you today well I'm, I'm actually just coming to a windfall of quite a significant yeah. amount of money and i'm looking to blow it on a frivolous expense yeah. like, i'm uh... actually a nigerian prince and i'd like to <laughs> give away some of my great wealth to someone very deserving i was wondering if you could help me market this service i i got a call the other day and the lady goes hi i'm calling from <laughs> You know, I'm like, what? Who? And she's like, limited. Yeah, I, limited, you know. And uh, I want to talk to you about uh, so-and-so. And I go, much like you, Liz, I go, you know, I'm just going to stop you there. I'm I, I'm really I'm really not interested. Thank you. Get ready to hang up. She goes, whoa, but but I've not even told you what I'm calling about. And I'm like, I think that's pretty telling. Unless it's, ma- <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's magic beans, I don't want to know. <laughs> Do you have some magic beans? Oh, my God. Oh please, more wine, more wine, yes. oh, more please, wine John. Yes. Well, um, <laughs> while I while I pass the glass over, to, glass. Uh, so I mean, are we in general agreement? I feel it's been an easy episode. Are we in general agreement that like guilt marketing is bad? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Now, we had a, a listener suggestion that when we talk about taking in uh, hate suggestions, okay. we should call it the hate train. Well, how about just hate mail? Oh my god, that's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the one but about then, fantasy. But, then, but the hate train, because the love train is a song, isn't it? Oh, that, I, that's I guess, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Love Train's the song. Was that I like, guess that's the pun. Was that S Club 7? No? What, Love Train? Yeah. No, no, people, that, was, that, that was the 80s. That was the issue to Dallas. Are <laughs> 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 you taking the mic out of me, John? No, no, I wouldn't be. No, Love Train's like an 80s song, yeah. isn't it? People yeah. all over oh, the world it? join hands. Start a love train. Oh, okay. Yeah. Love train. This is a very different I'm podcast. Just, this I, I like it. Yeah, it's good. That's what it's like. A, all this free wine will do. Um, well, should we? I was going to say hop aboard the hate train, but no. Should we check out some hate mail? <laughs> <laughs> I helped. That is actually much better. Right. Shame on Alex for suggesting it. Oh, Alex, don't listen to him. Okay, so I'd like to change my hate. <laughs> to Alex. So Alex. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know. You guys can be the Greek chorus. Um, Andrew shouts out to us via Facebook and says he hates the amount of social stigma you get for not liking to celebrate your birthday. How do we feel about that? I think everybody's birthday is special. Really? So I don't agree. Okay. I, I think, I think you know, celebrate in your own way, but I think you should celebrate. <laughs> so Sorry. What if your celebration is in the form of not celebrating <laughs> and hating everyone around you and, yeah. gen- and generally being morose and unhappy? I, I disagree. I don't I know. Yeah, terribly Even sorry. Even if you want to spend the day in bed, that is your celebration. That's fine. Oh, I'd like so that. You'd probably, so you'd probably agree that social stigma, judging your method of celebration, yeah. is incorrect. Mm. So maybe, maybe reading around Andrew's suggestion, it's like... Uh, He's saying he doesn't want to have like a big party, but That's like fine. if if society judges him, but I think he needs to acknowledge it's his birthday and appreciate it and and do what he wants to do. I I can sympathise. You I, hate your birthday. It's weird. I don't know why, but I found <laughs> right. in recent years I tend to get a little depressed on my birthday. Do you um, get engaged on your birthday? I did. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, darling. No, Hi, dear. That was a wonderful day. <laughs> But I feel the birthday before I was quite down, and this birthday just gone. I was just a bit meh. wasn't wasn't anything wrong with the day. wasn't anything wrong with the day at all. I was just I was just a bit kind of like, eh. and I think because I was quite happy doing nothing at all. Like I was just quite happy having a chill day. But I feel the social pressure to have a party was weighing on me. So even though I didn't want a party, I felt like the world was judging me for not doing anything better on my birthday i think it might be like i i do not have a history of doing anything special on my birthday because again it's very near the start of the year people are still drunk yeah. So, yeah. so nobody's ever up for anything on my birthday so i've kind of got a history of just not just not doing anything and as such nobody expects me to really do anything so there is no social stigma if i don't if i decide to not make a big deal of my birthday so maybe it's more his andrew's specific birthday that he, he feels mm. there is specifically social stigma against him not celebrating his birthday. Well, if his birthday was the 25th of December, that might be well, a little yeah. awkward. You know. <laughs> I've never heard of a sto- social stigma around celebrating a birthday. Or not celebrating. Or not celebrating, as the case may be. It's up to him. <laughs> Frankly, well, I don't care. Clearly he feels this is a real thing. I, yeah. feel, I feel the problem, Rev, is that... Who's, who's putting pressure on Andrew to celebrate his birthday? I'll deck him. <laughs> I'll have him, Andrew. Don't worry about that. Yeah, Andrew, give us some names. Give us some names, and, uh, Andrew, and I'll have him. I'll hold him back and... Uh, I'll work the ribs. He'll work the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the problem. We've had a few too many wines on it. Oh, we're getting surly. Let's just go out on the street. Let's go street fighting. I want to go. Let's go fighting. I feel the problem, Rev, is that you are... Well, frankly, when you hold a party, people, people sit up and listen. You know, people Thank care. you. Well, the last two birthdays, I've actually been an, on holiday. Oh, my. The last two birthdays I've had. Yes, well, but you... somebody organised a party for you. Oh, yes, thank you, dear. Yes, Surprise indeed. party that I surprised the guests at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was... Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I remember You that. were the guests. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it didn't quite work out, did it? That was very nice, actually. It was perhaps the most middle-aged birthday <laughs> party I've gone to. And it was lovely. It was I, lo- I loved every room. minute. Played of it, some actually. board games. Yeah, it was delightful. Had some beers. Yeah, just, you know, kind of sad. Talked about our feelings. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, how about this? Um, uh, another regular listener to the show, Alex, writes in and says... Is this the same Alex? No, different Alex. Oh, okay. no, actually, <laughs> le- legitimately a different Alex, actually, writes in and says, I hate it when a regular podcast host isn't on the podcast due to honeymoons. Mm. I mean, oh, is, I mean, are they talking uh, about yeah. Nick? <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. Could, could be talking about anybody. Could be talking about anybody. <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, it is frankly but let's just, just inconsiderate for someone let's to go assume off and they live are their own life Nick. when other people are trying to live a life as well, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're married, you know. See, I disagree with this one too. I think Nick should be having a lovely time. No, <laughs> no, I think he should be here. I, th- I, think, I think he should have curtailed his honeymoon. I think he should be here. I th- Where is Nick Angel? And, uh, who do we have on the phone right now? Yeah. <laughs> it's I thought you were about three a.m. Where he is? Like oh. he should have, he should have got up and rung in. <laughs> well, the way you phrase that, Liz, I thought you were going to say it very differently. It's like I disagree. I'm glad he's gone. He was holding <laughs> us back. Um, no, Alex, I just, just to kind of like uh, you know book in bookend this and not to get into the love too early but he says he does love the brave souls who soldier on in uh, Nick's absence oh thank you oh, that's us that's us yeah that is, yeah, that is us yeah. that's us as is, Nick combined just, yeah this is just a habit for them like they can't thank not you. do this like we're just here holding them back stopping them falling off oh I, I was I was off of <laughs> turkey nuggets so I had no choice but to turn up yeah it is becoming a, a tradition now yeah. the pod pre-podcast turkey nuggets. I can confirm the turkey nuggets are as good as they sounded in episode one. <laughs> they, 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 not even my best nuggets, I would say. Well, I, I would make them again. On, honestly, and... John, they tasted store-bought. Thank you. In, like, in a good way. That's I don't kind, mean that to be insulting. That's the kindest words I've ever received. They were very nice. Actually. They were very good, yeah. They were very nice. Okay, how about from, uh, from a listener and resident uh, Ray of Sunshine, James, who writes in and says, I agree. I hate people that don't make an effort to smile. Mm. Oh, yes. But doesn't it take more? It takes less effort to smile than to frown. But it takes no effort at all to just do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what am I smiling at? I don't think there's a lot to smile about nowadays, as our hate, what? as the last hour of hate would uh, would attest. Liz is, Liz is going to disagree again with the listeners, which is risky. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, Liz is a firebrand. I, uh, you know, it's a very, it's a very risky strategy. Let's see if it pays again. off for you. <laughs> say, say your piece. So. Pre Chris Ray, <laughs> <laughs> so what people I know, James is one of them, who <laughs> who have done uh, online dating, yet majorly swipe past anyone not smiling. Oh, what is wrong with smiling? Was I smiling? The amount of people who, especially boys as well, who try to do the like smize or whatever it's called, like the grumpy look Sorry, or whatever. What? No, that's a not. what? I have what? heard. I have heard the term smize. What is what? smize? Yeah, yeah. Like smiling when you do like a, you smile with your eyes. Yeah, yeah. All this? No, 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 no. I want to see teeth. Wow. You do not want to see my teeth. No. But no, I'd like. If you're if you're if you're Smize. building a, pro- a profile on a dating site, then yes, smile. You know, yes. it's a dating site. How do you smile with your? I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> like, right. Okay, let's just break it down. I can. I okay. I'm with you where like someone is smiling, but the eyes are insincere. Like we can all tell when somebody is. A, we can. Sorry. We can all tell when somebody is doing a fake smile. However. If you're not smiling at all, like if your if your if your mouth is a grimace or a sexy pout, how do you <laughs> convey? <laughs> I'm sorry, Alfred, I'm listening. trying to do it. Chris Ray is gurning something uh, spectacular. I don't think I, I don't think I can physically no, do it. It's like if you're not moving your mouth, how do you convey a smile with your eyes? You just look kind of quizzical, or like. Hmm. <laughs> I, I don't think I can do it, but we'll Google it afterwards. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah look up, there's like... got to be some instructions somewhere. I believe the first time I heard the term was actually um, on America's Next Top Model. I think that's where I got it from. Um, oh, <laughs> because grief. my sister was obsessed with that show and it was always on in the house when we were still living together. <laughs> you see, the thing is, like, I know like, I know that you have seen like two episodes of America's Next Top I've Model I've probably seen two full life. series of that <laughs> show and that's more than I ever want to see. But that's dating it because it's been a while since you lived with your sister. Yes. So Smize, therefore, has been around longer that I'm entirely comfortable with. <laughs> yeah. It's annoying to think that it's like a, like a virus. It's out there in the world. People are talking about it. But you would not believe how many people just don't smile in pictures. But then it, the, the other it's half just... is like, I, you're saying like people who don't make the effort to smile, but there's no context there. Like I 
dislike being told to smile by strangers on the street. That's ha- that has happened to me, and it makes me want to punch someone. Okay. Usually the person yes, who's told me to smile. That would make me want to punch someone. There we are. <laughs> it's like, D- but, ah! but so what, um, why, why should I make any special effort to look nice for you, random uh, person uh, on the street? Okay, I mean, I, I have to ask, <laughs> what, what asshole told you to smile? Oh, John, usually, you hold them down, I work the ribs. <laughs> it's usually a middle-aged smelly man. Like, uh, there's a whole breed oh, of Oh, I know that. Guy. And they say, no, oh, no, no, no I friend. know the type. Yeah. And they come up and they're like, it's not that bad. I'm like, you literally, you, I could be walking home from a funeral. You have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, I know the type. And it's like, it's usually like, oh, you, you know, smile, maybe it won't happen. Like, what? Or yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or yes. I don't know, like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think smiling's overrated. I think a smile has to be genuine. You've got to earn a smile. Yeah, entirely. Got to earn a smile. Like, why... Uh, I think I was chatting with someone the other day about this. It's like, if you are happy all the time, like if if, if you are just brimming with joy 24-7... Something wrong with you. It starts to feel disingenuous. It's like, I feel you have to have moments where... I'm not saying you have to be unhappy, but you've got to have moments where you've got resting face, where you're just like, (laughs) you know, I can't walk down the street just beaming all the time. It's like, oh, look at that gum. You know, (laughs) look at that overpriced parking you know, it's like I, I think it's difficult to smile and do something else at the same time. <laughs> like Chris knows I can't take a selfie because I'm concentrating on pressing the right buttons and getting the picture in the right place. That's why I everyone can't does smile like, at the same time. That's why everyone does like the duck face thing where you're like oh, Yeah. <laughs> okay, how okay, if there's a chart, how do duck lips relate to a smize? I definitely do. <laughs> okay, we'll get. We're, we're, know, we're yeah. clearly going to have to do some googling after, yeah, yeah, after this yeah. podcast because I need to know what a smize. <laughs> I've never heard that expression. It's horrible, isn't it? No, I, I don't like words being combined together. No, portmanteau. portmanteau. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you that was two odd. spend a bit of time together. Yeah, we should. Uh, we should get married. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, let's be spontaneous. <laughs> okay, well, here's something we can all relate to. I feel, uh, Matt hates uh, the feeling of sore muscles when you have the flu. Oh, yeah, because you've not done anything to earn it. It's just there to irritate you. I have sore muscles Agreed. generally. I just wake up and I'm sore. I just find, like, you know, my, you know, the general, you know, my ears hurt from the sound of, like, my muscles just kind of chafing, just rubbing just together. Get, <laughs> just get, we're over 30, John. It's just, yeah, it's just happened, it's doesn't just it? Downward. I mean, like, I'm I, not. No. Uh, and you see, like, unlike the... Uh, Cashback. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Lazarus effect here. I've, um, I've resigned myself to the slow decay of my body, which has already set in. I'm desperately trying to cling on to youth, I think. More wine? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Excuse me a moment, listeners. Mm. Um, I... No, it's like, I, I mean, being ill makes me pretty angry anyway. Yeah. May, may be learning, but a lot of things in life make me angry. You're actually... So. Um, you are a joy when you're ill, <laughs> because your general <laughs> rage with the outside world become makes you quite dangerous to be around <laughs> like it's like i have a slight you, you come in you say oh i'm feeling a bit oh i'm feeling a little a uh, little peaky got a slight slight cough and i'm like oh jesus christ and i'm just like you know throwing up the barricade and like, you know, because you will just take your rage out on anything around you i just i just it, i dislike waste and being ill is a waste of time <laughs> sometimes i think if i if i was ill for a couple of days i could get so much done but in reality you're so you ill move. literally yeah, yeah like, you oh. can't move you can't get anything done <laughs> so, I, no, so i fully agree with this i i i hate how being ill doesn't just make you like sneeze and your head hurt because that's not even sometimes that just happens and you're not even ill yeah but it's the way it just drains you and prevents you from doing anything with at least a week of your life i agree why why do like, if you have a cold, you're a bit sniffly. If you have a flu, you can physically hurt mm. all over. Why is that? Isn't it just that it's... Speaking a more, as a biologist, why is that? Is it just a more potent viral load, in a way? Is it attacking your nerves in some way? Maybe. Is it creating like a I mean, a physical... flu is... This is the weird thing, isn't it? Because we live in a, a world of what glorious, glorious antibiotics and even antivirals these days. I don't know if any of us here actually know what it's like to be proper ill. Like, just a, a thing that you cannot get any treatment for. Interesting. I see no, yeah. those two are just <laughs> whining at all. These two, yeah, just... <laughs> but you, you forget that things like... The flu is actually quite dangerous. 
Like, yeah. whatever that does to your body, it's a thing that can really do damage to you. But we're so used to the flu being normal. No, it's not that bad because our mm. immune systems are kind of strong and we're not weakened. I... So I actually had whooping cough as a child because I was allergic to the whooping cough vaccine. So I couldn't have the second booster. So I had whooping cough. That's like a good old fashioned disease, yeah. isn't it? Like... I got it straight after having chicken pox. So like, like my immune system was compromised and I'd had chicken pox and it went straight into Oh no. Cough. And... You cannot breathe, like because your body is just trying to like reject your lungs, <laughs> it's like, and oh you just—I could not breathe in, and I just was out for like two weeks, just because I could not get enough oxygen into my system to pro to run my body, and I guess I guess I was kind of lucky in a way that I didn't need to be like hospitalised or anything because. There's a reason we vaccinate against whooping cough because it's awful. <laughs> mm. Mm. However, the name makes it sound kind of fun. <laughs> That is not a good... If you th- consider that it's named after the noise you make yeah. as you're trying to breathe. Cholera is a fun word. <laughs> yeah. Col- cholera me surprised, you might say. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's very that's good. Very we didn't even plan that. that. Delightful. It's, it's good, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But yes, so I fully, fully agree that being ill sucks and the way your body just gives up on you when you're ill also sucks. Mm. And I hate it. It's very hard to disagree. Yeah. But I don't think anyone is like, no, I actually quite like the feeling of flu. Oh, I anyone anyone who likes being it. ill, screw you. But some people do milk it. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, see, see, there's a I hate people that milk being ill. <laughs> see, Liz, there's a lot of hate in this. <laughs> You've been like kind of sunshine and, and roses like for most of this, but there's an edge. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> sunshine and farts. <laughs> Let it out, the anger. Not you necessarily, but the attitude you're showing. Dear. Sorry. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, there's... Here's, here, here is a hate from someone who has actually requested to remain anonymous. Ooh. Is for... it one of us? No, no, it isn't, of course. <laughs> but no, stay away. Why can't it's, I see it? Because anonymous... I'm not going to say that. Anonymous name. means anonymous. I'm not going to say it. Honestly. Okay, so this person, for fear of their own life, has actually oh, God. Shared, wow. shared this with us. Oh, we're going. Okay. Okay. I hate celebrity photo shoots. That announce a pregnancy. Case in point, Beyonce. I thought you were going to say Beyonce. Beyonce. My problem is that it demonstrates ego. Usually when someone is pregnant, they're happy. I.e., you know, they're nurturing a child. It's a huge responsibility. Beyonce, on the other hand, has decided to say, Look upon me. I am a goddess for this amazing feat. Behold my resplendent glory. Exact words. <laughs> I'm not trying to put down mothers or pregnancy, and I'm not saying it isn't beautiful. I'm just saying that this is all a bit stupid, and yes, it's empowering, good, enjoy it, rally behind it, that's great, but all this person can see is the ego behind it. And I, I mean, believe I'm, it's... Sorry. I would start by disagreeing with a single point in that. Okay. Otherwise beautiful to raid. Pregnancy is not beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> pregnancy is... You're back breaking and you're not being need, needing to pee constantly and every an ankle. Yeah, every part of your body aching and developing lumps and fluid where it really shouldn't. And the one good thing I've heard from my friend who's been pregnant a couple of times is that your hair looks fantastic. Uh, <laughs> and your boobs get big. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I feel um it, it's you know, maybe it's slightly easier. If you are a millionaire and you Uh, maybe have, or billionaire, who knows, and you maybe have a team of stylists 24-7. To make you photo shoot ready. Yeah, it probably probably helps. You've not been able to sleep because whatever direction you sleep in, everything is kicking you. I feel the photo (laughs) shoot probably would have gone very differently if it was the (laughs) average person dealing with pregnancy and they're throwing up on the cameraman and they just want to die, you know, and they're like, I need Turkish delight, you know, like right now. Beyonce looked like she'd been thrown up once that morning. Yeah. To be fair. Yeah. You know, in front of that brief. I shy away from this sort of news and that doesn't really affect me enough to hate it. But yeah. So is, yeah, because is... apparently I like, just Beyonce is care the queen less. of all women, but I, I didn't get the memo, and no, I, I didn't vote for her, so I'm 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 not sure quite how to feel about it. No, I couldn't care less. As an extension of this, it I find it annoying where you know uh, we we live in the UK, we are governed by well, you know, ostensibly not by the Queen, but you know the Queen is kind of in charge, 
Uh, Martha Queen. <laughs> uh, gonna have a falling out now. <laughs> <laughs> I I find it annoying when our news will report endlessly on which toy that the prince is it George? George, yeah. Yeah, the young prince George will play with because. That's news, apparently. Yeah, and I couldn't care less. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> there, there Not you unless it's a Buzz Lightyear. Oh, you see, well, that's, 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 that's a different, different. That's yeah. a different story. Unless, unless they found Prince George uh, playing with a flick knife or half a pigeon which was left in the playground or something like that. But even that's not that interesting. That'd be, I'd be kind of interested. Would you? Yeah, if he turned out to be a little psycho. In, in the what, he shot it with a BB gun or Yeah, something. you know, it's like uh, Prince George found, uh, you know, a collection of dead cats found in Prince George's uh, little play palace or whatever he's got. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know... Sounds like a Playboy mansion. I do not wish ill upon any human being because I'm a wonderful person. However, it annoys me when... <laughs> How far into this podcast are we? Oh, we've been going for four hours. <laughs> However, I... I should I, be at a wedding about now. <laughs> like, uh, you know, whether someone is announcing the, the birth of the queen of all women, uh, you know, uh, and her child, or, uh, you know, our future benevolent dictator. But I, I just, I don't know, I, I feel like so many people are having children around the world. Yeah, it anno- it annoys the, me yeah, when it like any having, one person gets special treatment. Being able to get pregnant and have a child is not that remarkable. I mean, despite the fact that, statistically speaking, the human race is one of the least fertile animals on this planet. Is that right? Really? In that, that any one female, if left to her own devices, could maybe successfully give birth, like, five times. Mm. You know, before just shit starts going bad. <laughs> and it's just not a good idea anymore. We have a very short, kind of, um, fertile period compared to other mammals. And at most we can get pregnant once a year well it's like there's a lot of animals then, which would do it yearly yeah it's like hey or new have baby litters. Bang. most, ma- most yeah. mammals have litters most of our births are single it's hard to give birth to any more than yeah. a single child you know and uh, it, even then we have seven billion human beings and counting on this planet it's not it's not like we're running short <laughs> and too many of them and speaking as a um, you know a a a, a slightly insecure man going through a kind of you know quarter life crisis i was speaking today with someone who was expecting their first child and that's terrifying like you know a litter would be even worse i have to say <laughs> look after one child is i can enough, barely like, look no. after myself i know frankly. god no i mean like it'd be terrible. you and you and me are just doing a podcast and we're drunk on red wine oh yes no we're, we're, we're just sat on the sofa wine, and we're, yeah. we're just drunk on red wine yeah right and frankly now. like liz and lucy are doing most of the heavy lifting yeah <laughs> yeah in this episode have i got noticeably quieter as the yeah. <laughs> podcast has gone on well tell you what so nick leaves and it all falls apart mm, i'm not sure there's a correlation no it's fine yeah. well, it's so... his wine you're drinking isn't it uh what no what no. <laughs> it's his Father-in-law's wine. Yeah, oh, yes, that's I there's understand. a big difference. How 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 day? How 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 day you insinuate that we would drink Nick's wine on a Friday evening for free? Cheers, by the way. Rather than <laughs> rather than go to the pub and pay for it ourselves, it's very good. I mean, having a father-in-law who lives in France and understands wine goes it's a long very way. Helpful. It is a nice. I'm not sure the barmaid much money at their wedding. No, there was I a lot of wine. Oh yeah, well, we I, I, we, I bought a few. Yeah, it was really cheap. That, that yeah, bar. I know it's nice. We should probably well, talk about this when we're not drink. doing the podcast. Maybe, maybe we should. Yeah. yeah, this is probably not a subject yeah. for the podcast. <laughs> okay, we'll speak. I, I love cheap wine. I, I can, <laughs> acknowledging that this has not been the tightest of shows. <laughs> so, uh, should we fire through the loves quickly? <laughs> Smash through so it so we can get on yeah. with our lives. Lucy, what Me? Are you? Yes, I love cheesy nineteen sixties British TV. Wow. <laughs> you know, this is not coming as a, as a surprise to me. Which one specifically? Uh, well, um, I was showing Liz. I have the full DVD collection of The Champions. Do you? Um, from 1967. Nice. Um, which is one of my favourites. And it's just hilarious in so many ways that it shouldn't be hilarious. <laughs> um, I also have the full series of The Prisoner. Nice. From mm. the 60s, which I've never actually watched all of. No. It's like there's only so much surrealism you can take in a sitting. Like, <laughs> there, there are chunks in the middle that I've just never watched. And one day, one day I will get round to it. I also have select episodes from Randall and Hotkirk Deceased. Nice. Um, I'm going to let 1969. 
Yes, and I've uh, oh, yeah. in discussing this, we've discovered that Liz actually has the entire series. That yeah, she does big time. Series. The entire two series of that show, and she no longer wants them, so they're coming to live with me. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, wh- how? Why? Like, why do you have those? So I think there must have been a rerun or something on TV, and I got really into it. And uh, got these aren't the, the 60s versions, though. No, sorry, these are the remakes. Oh, well, I don't care about the... Oh, I'm songs. sorry. It's Reeves and Morton. <laughs> yeah. It's Reeves oh, and Morton, which I loved when I was... Okay, I was well, I, I think I'll lend them to you then, John. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. You can watch them at least Maybe it lives want, up to or, it, I, I, I don't know. But I... Um... So, yeah, I have the DVDs and they've been in the car boot pile for a little while. Three so car boots in a row and they're, they're not gone. They're yours, John. <laughs> Crying out loud, I mean, and you've, you've shifted all kinds of tabs. Star Wars, <laughs> we, Star Wars, Star Wars we, shi- we, sh- we shifted a mop bucket once. A used <laughs> yeah. mop bucket. <laughs> yeah. A soiled... The woman was like, mine broke this morning. Happy yeah. days. I wish I cleaned it now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have um, a deep fondness for the relentless stereo colour optimism of the of that kind of era of tv and it's i love how um particularly in the champions it's very obvious how there is a, in the champions if you don't know it there are three main characters who all get superpowers from a magic tibetan uh, mountain people um it kind of makes sense in context but do. not really <laughs> we, we've all been yeah. there yeah, yeah yeah but they are uh two men one of whom is a spy the other of whom is a cryptographer and one woman who is a like double PhD microbiologist, um, and it is hilarious watching the series that different writers weren't quite sure how to write her, and sometimes she's not a wimp and just gets to do like the medical stuff, and the boys literally say to her, "Let us deal with this. You go over there." Other times she's literally picking up cars <laughs> and <laughs> throwing them around and just beating people over the head with large objects, and it's quite <laughs> hilarious, and I love it very much. <laughs> I am amazed that it hasn't been remade. It is it is ripe for a remake, that show, because you could do so much with that concept these days. Like so They're in like an international police organisation, they're based in Geneva, and it's all very like sexy and humanitarian and very <laughs> cool. But those three characters could be just as relevant yeah, today. Because really. they're basically, they're all uh, super like, strong, yeah. uh, super fast, they're not quite telepathic, but they have it's, like super hearing. They can noise. move things. Yeah, the idea is their superpower, as it's meant to be, is meant to be that they're the best humans ever could be at anything. So they're all as strong as any human has ever been. They are all as fast as any human has ever been. And because it's the 60s, they're all telepathic and <laughs> like can do sort of weird like um, super meditation to survive in the extreme heat or extreme cold or like transmit their memories across space and time and that sort of thing um, but only do. only to each other like only oh. to the three of them um, so yeah I, I, as you can tell I, I, I adore it and I love the ridiculous cost cutting measures as well <laughs> um, the two producers on on a lot of these shows they had a wide range of shows all at the same time um, Monty Berman and Dennis Spooner were notorious for being utter cheapskates. Um, <laughs> they would literally chase ambulances with cameras to try and get some stock, <laughs> some stock footage of Brilliant. wherever that ambulance was That's going awesome. or wherever that fire <laughs> engine was going. That's awesome. Um, they would also reuse the same set every single week and just repaint it. Each week. <laughs> if you watch the champions all in a row, they're, they've used there's the same building. It's the same set with like a spiral staircase that goes up one side of the room and it's just a different colour every week. And sometimes it's dressed up as like a hotel lobby and sometimes it's a manor house and <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's a creepy cellar. <laughs> and, it's just, Mega. <laughs> and it just it makes me laugh a lot. I like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> your um your taste in, in, in television shows is quite varied. You, it you varied is a nice I, way I, of putting I'm it. I'm trying to be charitable here. Like you you have a high tolerance for crap. Yes. Uh, again, I was trying to be nice. However, I I watched a fair amount of the Champions yeah. with you, and uh, yeah, it's charming as hell. Like the the ways in which they try to save money and the cheapness of it is uh, it's so wonderful. Yeah, like, they're just the daft things like they're supposed to be based in Geneva, but the, the big boss is like in this chief office with what is obviously a painting outside the window <laughs> of like Geneva. <laughs> Just yeah. looking at, looking out. Yeah. Oh, what can you see? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm entertained. I like it. Lot. I like that one. Liz. So my love was for kind people. 
who got me out of the mud on Sunday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she probably needs a bit of context. This relates to the yes, wedding. Yes, so the wedding, which was marvellous and in a very lovely setting, uh, was in the middle of nowhere with a uh, very little telephone signal and a lack of local taxis and my car got stuck in the mud in a field and uh, so late saturday night could not get the car moving and so very nice people who are related to those in the room um <laughs> gave, gave us a lift back to our hotel so we didn't have to sleep in the car or uh, on somebody's floor and then in the morning we managed to um get a team of ushers also known as the crew i believe um who helped us get the car out of the mud and i think there ended up being 10 of us and you know everybody's ru ruined their shoes and had skid marks up there their whatever they were wearing and stuff <laughs> and so yes i would just like to thank everybody and show my appreciation it's a good team effort that. yeah it was delightful <laughs> the, well it, there was, it was your who... car and it was someone else's car which was much much yeah, yeah the other harder. car was much well, the other up. car was real wheel drive so that yeah. caused and it was a, a it was a proper <laughs> it was yeah. a big yeah. hatchback well. yeah, yeah hatchback, bmw heavy hatchback. Estate heavy car yeah it was a heavy look and that took that's about half hour yeah it was. I felt really good at after that though. Yeah, I, was like, I mean, we've done. We've achieved something. Like it was a good way to give the veins in your head a bit of a workout. Yeah. After like being <laughs> a tiny, oh, tiny bit hungover. I was a little bit hungover. Yeah, but um, <laughs> leaning heavily into the car. And besides that, like, the the chap who owned the venue was an absolute legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he clearly yeah. done this a lot. Yeah, like, he went to us. Thanks everyone, and we were like, no, thank you. No, no, <laughs> no you're you're the hero here. Yeah, yeah. but I mean. You know, you might say, well, you know, anybody would have done it. A lot of people wouldn't have. And a lot of people would have gone, oh, dear, that's a sticky situation you're in. I'm going to head off home now. Mm. And, uh, yeah, lots of people wouldn't have helped. So, yes, big, big thanks. Big yeah, love. That's a nice one. Well, I mean, like, I, it, it, it was a pleasure. You know, it, <laughs> was, it was a pleasure to be involved. And um, it got me out of bed. Because <laughs> we came knocking on Which your door. Which was nice, you know. We were actually, the thought... reason we knocked on your door is because we thought that's where the owner of the farm Oh, lived. I see. So we could have got away. Someone goes to us, oh, yeah, you want to look for Catherine? So you open the door and I went, hi, Catherine. <laughs> I've, uh, I've known you uh, for yeah. years. Hi, sir. You don't know me, but <laughs> we've um, never met. Things, I seem to remember, like, getting your car out. Yeah, easy enough. Easy. First yeah. time we got that out. Yeah, we just powered through. First time. Um, but there was like about six of us, I feel, like leaning in, like at the back. And uh, when we were trying to get that BMW out, Jesus it was quite Christ. heavy. And well, we were giving it all that, you know, we got we got carpet under I the wheels. I was flexing my muscles during all that. <laughs> and then we're, we're kind of like, you know, maybe maybe we loosened it up a bit because over the hill comes uh, another wedding guest. Um, <laughs> we'll, call him, we'll call him Jim. Six foot. <laughs> yeah, just, he was, he was. Rugby just, guy. Oh, he was an Adonis, wasn't he? <laughs> beautiful man. I'm like, Jim. I also I said, when he, as he came time too. As he came over the hill, I said, I'd like two tickets, please. <laughs> I'm like Jim, take us home. And uh, first time with Jim, yeah, What's it was his amazing. Name, Jim? Yeah, oh. it's like we we it's like a, it's like taking. The, I just uh, saw his muscles. Yeah. It's like taking the lid off a off a off a jar. We just kind of like we, we softened it up for him. We we loosened it up and Jim, yeah, took yeah, Jim yeah, yeah. You know, he smashed against the sink. Yeah, it was amazing. So, well, I mean, yes, I agree. Who who doesn't enjoy the kindness of strangers? Mm. Yes, mm. and other wedding guests. Mm. Come on, let's get Well, I'm just going to literally say one line and you can say yes or no. Let's get this Sharon. Comfortable over. chair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Move on. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> most comfortable chair I've ever sat in was in an IKEA store in Bristol. Oh. Move but you on. only sat in it for like five I, I have to ask, did you buy it? <laughs> no. Not oh. yet. Oh. It's very good, though. Is Do it a pong? It? it was like a rocking chair <laughs> with, but like cushioned. Oh. It's very nice. Is it, is is it, it a, a pong? 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 Point. No, 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 no. It actually wasn't. It was like a, it had a, uh, a round base, and just a, like a pole up. It wasn't like a poang, which is I know is. It's got kind of a spring to it. Yeah, exactly. It's got a particular yeah. kind of bounce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, I, 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 from the mightiest pharaoh to the lowliest peasant. Who doesn't enjoy a good sit? Exactly that, yeah, John. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> that. So I, I'm not going to dwell on it. Everyone likes a comfortable chair. If you don't, then write well, in. Get out. Write in. Write in, and I'll argue with you happily. Well, I. Uh... 
Did the phone just ring? The phone did just ring. Just once. It's very unprofessional. Uh, that's suspicious. Okay, we'll say what. Do you think it's one of your email people from earlier? Maybe so. They're probably trying to guilt you into something. <laughs> oh, God. You know, who's calling at this point? John, okay. I noticed you're drinking wine and doing a podcast, but you've not replied to my email. I, d- I do enjoy wine and podcasts, though. Like, uh, Would you like some more wine, John? Uh, please. Yeah, we'll say what. You know, we're very nearly at the end of this. so <laughs> I, <laughs> It's a very professional <laughs> version of the show. I, I Like I said, you know, Nick left and it all just fell apart. Nick's <laughs> um, I... going to listen to this in Japan and he's going to be like, oh, dear. Yeah, I know. And he's suffering with earthquakes. Like, that's a real... Really? Thank you. Yeah, there's been earthquakes over in Tokyo. Oh. There's always earthquakes in Tokyo. Yeah, no, I saw that. Significant earthquakes in Tokyo. Yeah, that's just like, you know, normal. Yeah. Okay, well, look, I'm just going to be... Yes, go for it, John. Super boring, super simple. I love a little computer game called Dark Souls. Yay, Dark Souls. And I know that's a bit esoteric, so some people listening will be like, oh, yeah, I get that. Other people will be like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, it is a video game from 2011, which is well on its way to becoming a classic of its era. I think it's probably already there, to yeah. be fair, I would say. Like, if you need to, if you need to show off like the whole games as artistry and ideal level design and character design, you'd probably go for Dark Souls. I, I've never actually played Dark Souls, I have to say, because I'm terrible at anything that involves a controller. And I'm not too cheap to buy it for the PC. Yeah. Um, but I but greatly enjoy watching John it's, play it's Dark a very, Souls. It's a very good spectator sport. It is. Yeah. But we have realised that it has a, uh, an immensely um, powerful soporif- soporific effect Yeah, I on fall you. asleep w- watching Dark Souls. It's like all of... The, the, yeah. sound, the soundtrack is lovely. Like the, There's some really fantastic sort of soundtrack moments in it. But also, like, just all the sound design, the little noises it makes, like, when you pick up an item or when you die... Or when you like um, get to a new area or something, are just really nice, and I do just tend to fall asleep on the sofa well, while John's playing. It, it, I can't play video games. That's the thing. So I, I've often watched you play in a video game, mm. but I, I'm generally terrible at video games. But I can appreciate the artistry behind it. I, I'm not sure that I'm actually good at this game. It's a very hard. I don't know game. if anyone is actually no. good at this well, game. It, it's an incredibly challenging game, and it came out in 2011, and there's still quite. A large community of people playing it. Uh, it's a very bleak world. It should, in many ways, be a very depressing experience, but it's oddly relaxing. It's like you know, you've got this sense of like you're maneuvering through a world which is crumbling, which is falling apart. Like it's like a a great era of wonder is coming to an end, and you're just kind of trotting through this. The ruins of what's left. Yeah, like the, ruins on ruins on ruins. The rotting carcass of what was once <laughs> like a kind of amazing world, and it's haunting and it's beautiful and it's kind of bleak, but it's oddly relaxing. Like I, I, I just dove back into it this yeah. week on a bit of a whim, and it's I, I am totally addicted again. This is my fourth playthrough. They've, they've got you all over again. Yeah, yeah like it, they've got you by the balls. It really is as good as. Yeah. everything you hear I like the hype is real it's very very good i think it's like the it, there's a lot of it's very interesting as just as a piece of creative art because it's mm. the kind of story behind it if i'm getting this right is it's from a japanese uh, developer who loved western style fantasy okay like, novels and fusion things. yeah but the interesting thing is, is he didn't know enough english to understand those western style uh, okay fantasy novels properly like to really get into what's going on behind them and of course simply didn't have the cultural context that we'd have for those anyway so it's interesting it's like it's weird idea of it's dungeons and dragons but seen through the viewpoint of an entirely different culture and it's odd the the juxtaposition you get for it so you know that there are dragons and there are witches and there's gods but the gods just kind of live in a city up on the hill (laughs) and yeah, you know, it's it's, like... it's 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 weird and a little bit unsettling, mm-hmm. and it's like not quite familiar. Like you understand, like certain bits, like a little touchstone. You're like, okay, Lord of the Ringsy. Like there's kind of, you there know, an old, of magic rings. It was an old empire. Yeah. There's magic rings. You know, you can, some things you recognise just as being mm-hmm. tropes. Other things are just slightly skewed. It's not what you'd kind of expect. It's and... like, you know, the sort of the most important thing in the lore of the game is fire. Yeah. Like, everything is about fire, sooner or later. And it's interesting that, like, that's... Whilst you might have, like, this idea of, like, 
a lot of Western fantasy will have light as like the important thing, like light versus darkness. This is literally the fire. It is the yeah. fire versus the not fire. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's it's the heat death of the universe. Like ultimately, everything is going to die. Like you cannot save the world. You're just, I don't know, kind of like playing around in the Extending last. Extending it, maybe. Yeah. Like, by keeping something going. I'm gonna have to take your word for it on that it's one. It's really yeah. good. Like it, it's. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who appreciate it, like you do. It's not quite Sonic the Hedgehog. No. But no, nothing is. <laughs> but it's a close second. You know. You have I'm to pe- spend a lot of time with it to understand any of it, and I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. We do. <laughs> Are people sending in loves, John? Not we, so much. I've got to say, we've had a pretty weak. Uh, That's week rubbish. In terms of love. A weak week of love. I mean, the only love we have received this week is the joy. Of uh, the feeling you get after working out. Oh. And yeah. and the kind of buzz you're getting. I know muscles. who that. I know exactly who that was. I don't think you do. <laughs> uh, is, does it begin with an S? No. Oh, then I don't. No. But no, I I agree with that. Like. Is it you? No. No. Oh. It took me a good long time in my life to start actually like doing physical exertion as a thing of its own, rather than just. Something that happens accidentally when you have to run somewhere to catch the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and I greatly enjoyed it. And I recently, I had to take like two years off of my favoured uh, fitness style because I couldn't afford to keep going to the club while I was at university. No. Um, and I've just started to get back into it again. And I'm I'm waiting for the buzz still. I, I haven't quite got to the point it's where it's hard work fun at the moment. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get there soon. You'll get there, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you quite remember the feeling when you finished yeah <laughs> like when you're about to go for a run or something you're still like no i wish i wish i, yeah. I sat on the sofa things like ex- exercise is universally horrible like no nobody likes moving around <laughs> no nobody likes you know manipulating their limbs in three-dimensional space at anything faster than just kind of like standing <laughs> uh but yeah when you get through it it is kind of enjoyable I spent most of my life hating any form of physical exertion, but uh, yeah, I think I feel like in later life I've come to enjoy a bit of movement, a bit you've of training. Got to, you've got to find the thing that works for you. I think, like I've, I've never been big into competitive sports because I'm not very good at it. And at school they always made me take my glasses off, which is great fun when you're playing tennis. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't see the damn thing until it's an arm's length away, and by then it's too late to react. Um, so I just sort of, it wasn't until university where I realised sport was supposed to be fun. And then I couldn't find the sport that I actually liked. And then I discovered martial arts and they let me have swords. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think you need to disguise the exercise. Yeah. <laughs> like, obviously mm. I play netball and I'm thinking about what the ball's doing and what I'm supposed to be doing rather than how much I'm running around. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, that's why I find it fun. Whereas... Like, I could never go to a gym just I to, did, like, hello, let's stare at myself I did whatever. try. I, I, I put in a concerted effort. Oh, goodness, that must be nearly ten years ago now. I was like, I am going to go to gym. And I, I went, like, every night for ages and... It's horrendous. God, it was horrible. It was, <laughs> it was, it was just so mind-numbingly boring. At the time, I couldn't even afford to buy like an MP3 player or anything. Oh like, no! Oh, so, you can't do it without a some sort of so I was just there portable with, like, device. The you badly... have to distract yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I, was, I, mean... I was just sat, sitting there with this badly tuned telly of the local gym, and with all these people who had much fancier gym kit than I did, and I was like, this is just horrible and uh, yeah a couple of months went by and i just sort of stopped but again then swords so (laughs) swords make everything better (laughs) yes we agree yeah it's funny how violence solves a lot of your problems violence does solve so many problems yeah (laughs) even in your sleep (laughs) yeah especially in your sleep yeah i maintain there must have been a severe problem I, I don't remember what it was because I was asleep, but it was just instinctive. I had or, to protect maybe, you from something. May, you know, maybe I had like a kind of locked back or something, yeah. and I, I just needed a knee right up my ass to uh, to resolve that problem. I I've always that, said that I think about that's you. Probably the case, well, yeah, yeah exactly. Probably on my yeah, probably on my gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> just needed a good knee up his ass. Consistently ass, so. needed a knee up his ass. <laughs> well, it's been an odd episode. It has. I think we can agree. Um, well, yeah, Nick's Nick sort of pronounced and spelt his name differently. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and he's also two people. It's bizarre. 
Yeah. Well, you know, these things happen. You just got to roll with it. Yeah. Well, thanks that's for, what I always thanks say. Thanks for having me. You know what? It's been, <laughs> it has been an absolute joy. And <laughs> <laughs> that was so insincere. No, no, it's true. Those two I, are so drunk. I, I, I must admit, like, I'm not like so drunk, but I'm maybe like. I'm tipsy. Kind of. Kind. I'm, I feel kind quite giggly. Drunk, right? yeah. Yeah. Tipsy's good. Yeah. So I'd like to thank you, you know, Lucy and Liz, for bringing a degree of class to an otherwise quite, uh, you know, tacky Hard show. hitting. <laughs> Hard hitting ideas and thoughts and, mm. I don't know, stuff. Well, you know, we, we still haven't found a proper way out of this podcast. We haven't no. found like a... I can no. do next. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Not Grange Hill. Not Grange Hill. Not, Not again. Oh. And every time you do that, we have to pay the BBC £10. Yeah. It's killing oh, us. Oh, really? Yeah. BBC's really? only surviving because of our royalties. I know, it's bad. We could say, um, well, thank you. Thanks for the hate. But, thank- lo- but, lo- but love. love. What about Lucy's hate mail? Hate, hate. Like that? We had hate mail. I'm a oh. hate mail? Because I'm male, but the, but the post also? No. Hate. That's not working. You should love to hate the loves you hate to love. Profound.